Today, we're gonna to talk about five JavaScript projects to supercharge your portfolio. Learning to code can be stressful and hard, and that's why I was proud to write the book, Breaking the Code, that gives you those five essential steps to landing that first software job. Pick up your copy today at Amazon or any other major outlet. So today we're gonna to talk about five JavaScript projects to supercharge your portfolio. But before we get to that, let me tell you a little bit about our strategy around this and finding a job. The first thing that I want you to understand is that these are JavaScript projects and not full blown coding projects. If you want to know what a coding project is, you can watch the video above. And so that will tell you more about what we want there. In general, coding projects have a database and they have they solve a business problem. They have authorization, authentication, those kinds of things. JavaScript projects in general are more lighter weight. They primarily focus on front end skills, design skills, and those kind of things. But we have ideas to make those projects more interesting and more appealing. So the first thing that you need to do is separate these projects into what we're going to call a mini site. Now, a mini site has its own navigation separate from your portfolio. It shows you what the project's supposed to do, giving you like an intro or a landing page. A second, it's going to have a solve or some kind of UI that actually does the work. And we're going to show you examples of five of those today and a way, if you stick around, maybe to build unlimited amounts of these. So you can maybe have 10 or 20 of these types of projects on your portfolio and a way to generate limitless ideas for coding challenges or coding projects. So after you get that site done, it also needs to kind of push back into your portfolio so that your mini sites serve as more of an SEO game around making your portfolio more relevant or it gets a higher relevancy ranking because there's a lot of these links coming in. Now, where do we publish these? You can publish a JavaScript project that we're gonna talk about today on things like Netlify or Heroku, all of those kind of like static sites is perfect candidate for that. And so since you don't have a database, it should be hosted practically anywhere. So the primary skills you're gonna show off is like your knowledge of JavaScript, front end design. And if you do that and you pair that up with full blown coding projects, you're going to supercharge your portfolio and get that first software job. So the first project that we're going to talk about today is one that we've named Notary. Now, if you want to know how to build Notary, we've made a video here that you can go reference and look at the actual demo and like a code tutorial of building Notary. But what I want to do is talk about why we made a video about Notary and why um, we think it's relevant to put on your portfolio. So Notary does a couple of things. The first thing, it demonstrates a lot of skill. The second thing that it does, it also shows something that is familiar to a lot of people. Notary reads books off discs. So things like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, things that people recognize readily and they can very, very easily look at it like, oh, that works. That's the first chapter of Alice in Wonderland. Now, if you look at Notary, the, the tutorial, know that I pulled these books off things like the Gutenberg Press that are also not covered on a copyright. They're in the public domain. And I would advise you to use works like that if you want to replicate what I did on Notary. It also um, shows a particular skill in searching large volumes of text and using the Fetch API in JavaScript to pull back something that is local to the web server and not like an external service. So this is a different way to use fetch that most people hadn't thought of before. So what we need to show is a mini site that brings something familiar to the person that's looking at it, like a book like Harry Potter, or Alice in Wonderland, show a key feature like search and highlighting and using fetch and then wrap that all together inside of a mini site. And that makes Notary a really great project that you can put on your portfolio. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be made aware of all of our future great content. So the second project we're gonna build is a weather app. Now I know there are a lot of tutorials about weather apps on the internet written in JavaScript. And we did our own flavor here. If you want to know how to build a weather app, look at this video above and we do a full tutorial building it inside of JavaScript. Now you may be asking yourself with a project that's this familiar, why would I put that on my portfolio? Well, it solves a couple of things that you 
can demonstrate with a, a potential person reviewing your portfolio. Number one, our app hits an external API, as most weather apps do, to get the actual data. So you're demonstrating that you can hit an external um, third-party API, which is a kind of a really good skill to have if you're going to build applications for people. Now, if you want to go original and you don't want to build a weather app like a lot of other people have, you can also hit any third-party API and build an app around that. We've also done a video about the Marvel API and we brought in Marvel characters as well. So there's a lot of third-party APIs with a little bit of Google and search to create a unique experience. I think Spotify has an API that's really great. So you could build something around music, you could build something around weather, or you could build something around like some kind of pop cultural thing like Marvel or DC characters. Any of these work because it brings in a very familiar thing that people understand. It hits a third party API. And the, the third thing that you've got to do is make this thing look great. So if you bring a really good UI and it's attractive, easy to use, and then someone can look at this, for example, the weather, and they can do it in their own town or city or where they're located, it validates that the application works. And if it validates based on their own input, then it also validates the programmer that created it. And that's why we build Weather Pro, and that's why you should put it on your portfolio. So the third project that we're gonna build is one we've called Sunset Hills. Now to get an in-depth view in Sunset Hills, we did a coding challenge on our live channel, and you can go um, watch that and look at what other people built, as well as a detailed explanation of what the challenge is. But in general, it's if you're given an array of building heights, which of the buildings can see the sunset to the west? And all you're trying to figure out is if, if the building height is above or lower the buildings directly in front of it. This particular challenge does three things that I think an interviewer would be interested when reviewing your portfolio. The first one is it shows that you can manipulate or investigate arrays. And that's the primary thing behind this coding project is an array of manipulation. The second thing is we're going to call this is gamification. And so if you look at the types of UIs in our coding challenge that were built out, um, a lot of them had very creative UIs that allowed you to manipulate the values inside the array using some very kind of complex front end techniques. And so this means that an interviewer would come in and maybe click on your site for a little bit and get lost. And this gamification element can also validate you as a programmer. The third thing that it does is it forces you to make a really creative, well thought out UI. So the gamification element combined with something that's really well thought out in the UI that's very creative validates you as a developer that you can build an engaging front end development sites. So think about manipulating arrays is the primary thing and then building these engaging front end experiences for your end user and that will supercharge your portfolio. So the fourth challenge we're going to talk about is zero hour. Now we created a video on how to build zero hour up here. And so we're going to overview what that is. Now zero hour is based on something we found in a game called destiny. And so there's three things that this project does that demonstrates skill and should impress an employer. Number one thing that it does is it navigates a 2d grid and finds the elements that are closest to the current position in the grid. And it also solves a maze at the same time using that technique. Now this technique is asked a lot in a lot of coding challenges, and you'll see this over and over again if you're doing whiteboard interviews, how to navigate um, different ways on a 2D grid. So it does that. The second thing that it does is that it's themed. And this theme is something that could be familiar to a potential employer without it becoming kind of childish or whatever, we, we've put it around a problem we saw in the real world and then we solve that in code and we can tie that up to a theme in a game like Destiny. It's not a gaming um, project per se, it's just themed around something that you can see in the real world. The third thing we're showing you is our gamification roots here like we did in the last one and that someone can now solve a maze by clicking around on the screen. So it does a couple of three things really well and I think that demonstrates your ability to solve more complex problems um, like 2D grid manipulation or finding the closest cell to the current cell, things like that. And I think all of those would be highly impressive to an employer reviewing your portfolio. So the fifth one that we're going to build today isn't really just one project in particular. Let's say that you've watched this video and the first four ideas you think are terrible and you don't like them and you want to come up with 
another idea or generate a lot of ideas. And this will technique will show you how to do that. The fifth one we're going to talk about is just coding challenges in general. So if you get a coding challenge on leak code or coding problems um, that you can find on the internet, you can take those challenges and then put a creative UI around that. So let's take a look at one of our students' portfolios and show you how they took a simple coding challenge and turned that into a coding project. All right, so what we're gonna look at is one of our students' um, Sunset Hills implementation. Now this applies, like I said, to any coding challenge that you could build. And this coding challenges could be anything you find on leak code or something like that. But Sunset Hills is one of those types of challenges. And basically he's got a homepage here. And now what you're seeing is also the mini site that we recommend that you build. Um, and so in here, we got a little explanation of what this is. So buildings with heights based on the inner value, we'll check if their view is blocked from the West. And then it, so he's got here is telling what his, what his project's gonna do. And then he's got a little solve button here. And this is where the application part comes in. And you can see here, I've got basically buildings here. And you can see the first one is in green because it can see the west side of the sunset to the west, but the other buildings are gray because they're blocked out. So when I change one of the values here, you can see this building grows and now it's green because it can see over the buildings um, to the west here as well. So even if say I change this one to four, you can see now it can also see here, but this, this building back here would be blocked until change it to six. See now it grows and now it has a, a way to do it. So it's a very simple application, but it represents solving a coding challenge in a gamified way. And someone here could spend a couple of minutes just looking through it and playing with it to see how the values um, played out. And we think that's a really good way to distribute your skills as a UI designer and also solving kind of algorithmic type challenges. The other thing that's added here is there's a code block here and we're using um, something here in the class called Prism.js that allows you to show your code right here on the website. So all of this is contained in here and you also added in a Git link um, so that if you wanted to pull the code down, you could from you know, your GitHub portfolio. And then this links right back to your main portfolio site. So that's an example of a mini site that, um, that you can use to supercharge your portfolio by just taking random coding challenges and show, showcasing those by building a creative UI around it. So to sum this up, these are five super easy projects that you could put on your portfolio to give you a quick win. You're not gonna spend months or years building these and they don't also take a whole lot of skill necessarily, something that you can very readily do today. But if you build them right and put the UI combined with the many sites ideas that we have, you can make them more impressive and it can really impress an employer to get that callback for that interview or actually land a job. So I think that building these coding challenges is essential to supercharging your portfolio. So if you're watching this and you feel like you want to learn to code or break into that software job, but you don't know where to start, we believe here at Coder Founder, everyone needs a teacher, a coach, or a mentor to truly break into coding. And we'd be honored to be your teacher, your coach, or a mentor. If you're interested in doing that, go to coderfoundry.com slash job roadmap. My team will be there to help you get onto that first software job. That's coderfoundry.com slash job roadmap. So I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.